Jeremy Blum back from another episode of Tech Bits. This week I have Zach Lynn with me. Zach does a lot of the filming and editing on some other videos you may have seen on my channel, some of the Ultimate Computer videos. He also worked on Deep, the Deep Note Guitar Hero Bot with me, and uh, we administer UltimateComputers.net together. Okay, so today we'll be talking about uh, how to get better frame rates out of your video games, and which settings you should use, and which options you should use, and what they mean. And, uh... Okay, so we're going to go through a few different things. First, screen resolution, whether you should use full screen or window mode, uh, anti-aliasing, uh, anisotropic filtering, high dynamic range rendering, whether you should use that or not, and uh, a few other less common settings that aren't necessarily in all games. So for screen resolution, uh, most commonly you'll want to use the max resolution that your monitor can support. But there are some cases where that's not favorable, um, mostly whether your frame rate is too low. Uh, so you might want to drop your screen resolution down. Make sure you drop it down to a similar aspect ratio. Um, and you also might want to consider using windowed mode. Windowed mode um, allows you to do different aspect ratios. If you want to play the game in widescreen mode and you can't because you have a full screen monitor or you have a 4x3 monitor, you can try that. It might look better. Um, another reason you might want to use windowed mode is because you might want to be going in between your game and other applications you have open, and you know, that's usually hard in full screen because when you hit the Windows key, the whole thing comes down, it'll take a second before it'll reload your desktop, and switching back is kind of a hassle. Okay, uh, next is anti-aliasing. This is a very common setting, it's in most video games. Basically, what anti-aliasing does is it's smoothing diagonal lines when you have a grid of pixels. So, if you have a bunch of pixels and they're making a curved line, Obviously, if you get close enough, pixels are squares. Uh, what anti-aliasing is doing is it's, it's smoothing out that line by uh, adding extra pixels and adding some smoothing. And uh, it, it basically makes everything look a lot smoother and uh, more realistic. Anti-aliasing depends on uh, how much geometry needs to be smoothed. So if, let's say, you're playing Crisis, Crisis has a huge amount of geometry, huge environments, an entire island. Uh, and a, a huge viewing spectrum that it needs to uh, it needs to smooth. So there's going to be a much larger performance hit in that game than uh, maybe some other games that have smaller maps. There's also different levels of anti-aliasing. Uh, generally, uh, two or four times uh, are not going to see a huge performance hit in your video card, and you get a good amount of uh, improvement in how the game looks. Once you move to six, eight, and sixteen times, it starts to degrade performance pretty significantly, and you're going to need a very good video card to be able to handle that. Probably a multi-video card setup. Uh, and then some game, game engines don't even support uh, anti-aliasing because they use a different technique called uh, high dynamic range or HDR. We'll talk about that a little, late, little later. Or they use different types of lighting engines that uh, accomplish similar, a similar kind of thing. Bioshock is an example of a game that does that. Uh, and then, lastly, uh, you can force a game to use anti-aliasing even if it doesn't natively support it through something like the N NVIDIA control panel and ATI has a similar option in uh, their Catalyst control panel where you can basically force games to anti-alias pixels. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is anisotropic filtering. Um, most games, when you look at the textures, are actually made up of a lot of different maps. Um, they're called mini-maps. So you'll have, you have a brick wall, you'll have the basic brick wall texture that'll be at a certain resolution. Then you'll have smaller textures that have the same exact image, but they're just at different resolutions. And those are important because when you have objects in the distance, you don't necessarily want the highest resolution on those because it just requires a lot more computation and you're not going to get any better quality. So they'll use lower resolution images in the background for stuff that's far away. But the issue there is trying to get these all to look good as they converge and get closer in and out. So the technique called anisotrop anisotropic filtering um, it basically smooths uh, the lines that you get when you try to have textures that go deep into the screen and when you're looking at like oblique angles with your camera. Um, and you'll really notice anisotropic filtering when you look at like stone, uh, stone textures like on the ground as they go into the distance. When you have high anisotropic filtering, you'll notice that the textures look a lot sharper as they get further into the distance. And if you don't have it on, it'll start to just become a blur and it really won't look very good. So it's a really important uh, setting to have on when you're playing games like first-person shooters. Okay, uh, next, so if you want to compare uh, anti-aliasing and anti-histropic filtering, uh, first of all, as the screen size increases and the resolution increases, pixels are going to become smaller, so it doesn't matter as much. Uh, obviously, if you have smaller pixels, you're not going to notice uh, issues with smoothing them or them changing as they go back in the distance because they're a lot smaller and you don't necessarily see them independently as much as you would on a smaller screen or something with uh, larger pixels. Um, Anisotropic filtering will improve the image quality at basically all resolutions, but um, it does get slow as resolution increases because there's a lot more pixels that you have to uh, compute shapes for. And uh, lastly, in certain games, it's going to be too taxing, uh, and the image quality isn't really even going to be worth the performance hit. 
Uh, Crisis is a good example of this. It looks almost the exact same with zero anti-aliasing or a, or two and two anti-aliasing, but uh, it runs way slower when you turn on anti-aliasing. So it, in some games, it's just not going to be worth it. Uh, okay. The next thing we'll talk about is high dynamic range, um, and that's a pretty it's a pretty new technology that most games now are trying to uh, incorporate, and that pretty much just allows for a lot better reflections and a lot better lighting in most scenarios. Um, if you have a game like, if you ever played the game Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, you'll notice in that game the, the water reflections look really, really bright and they look really good and it really allows for all the lighting to look more realistic. Um, and again, that comes with a big performance hit. Um, HDR is very computational, uh, computationally intensive for video cards. And in some cases it might not work with different technologies like anti-aliasing. So uh, in some games you'll either have the option to have both of them, one of them, or neither. So it's a pretty new technology and it looks really good. Okay, so now onto some less common ones that you might not be as familiar with. Uh, the first of which is Bloom. Uh, if you played Crisis, then you're probably familiar with Bloom. In the first level, when you approach the beach scene, you notice the sun is very bright, and you, you see all the rays from the sun. It looks very dynamic. That's an example of the Bloom. Uh, you, they're generally the ba basically you notice know Bloom when the sun looks extremely bright and sharp. Uh, what Bloom does is it just intensifies bright areas to create more realistic lighting. So it's it's same thing, playing with the lighting and making it look more realistic. Uh, the next technology we'll talk about is um, parallax occlusion mapping. And parallax occlusion mapping is a great way to take textures that normally look flat and give them more of a depth. Um, you'll, you'll notice in some newer games when you look at like stone or brick on the ground that instead of just looking like a flat image, they actually have a good depth to them. And, you know, uh, traditionally that was accomplished by using bitmaps, or sorry, bump maps, which would just kind of add shadows and different spots and brightness to them. But um, Unfortunately, you know, that doesn't look too good anymore, and it doesn't actually affect the geometry. So, um, parallax occlusion mapping will actually make the geometry deform, and it'll actually make it look a lot better and more realistic when you want to get into different textures. Okay, and so la lastly, we'll just talk about quickly uh, a few programs that you can use to monitor your frame rates. First is Fraps. This is a very popular program. Basically, it just overlays your frame rate on top of the game you're playing. It can also be used to take some screenshots and record. Uh, the issue with frap, uh, Fraps, of course, is it's one more thing that you're running on top of the game, so some people believe it can impact frame rates a bit. Um, and then, of course, is the fact that a lot of games just have this functionality built in. Uh, Crisis, uh, Flight Simulator, they, they all have the ability built in to just view your frame rate, usually in the corner of the screen, along with a few other uh, informational pieces about how the game is performing. And another thing to note with Fraps is that you can also record video with it. Um, you can also take screenshots, so it's, it's a nice program. It offers a lot of features other than just frame rate. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically everything there's talk about when, uh, when it comes to video games and, set and video settings. So that's it for this week on Tech Bits. If you have any questions, please visit ultimatecomputers.net. Someone can help you out there on the forum. Uh, and until next week, I'm Jeremy Blum. I'm Zach Lynn. See you next week.